Hello everyone and welcome to my Autodesk Revit tutorial today. In today's Autodesk Revit tutorial, I'll be showing you how to model this reinforced concrete beam. And I'll also be showing you how to model in all these stirrups and longitudinal bars using the default Revit tools. So before I begin this tutorial, I'd like you to hit the subscribe button and like this video and share this video if you found it useful. And without further ado, let's get started. So I'll just quickly open up a new file. So click on file over here and new and click on project. I'll be using a structural template since it'll be much easier to work with when it comes to modeling structural elements. So before we begin any drawing, we should go to the manage tab and check the project units. The most important thing for us is to know the unit for length in this drawing file. So right now it is in millimeters. We do not need any decimal places because it would be impractical to measure beyond a millimeter in the construction site. And I prefer to have the unit symbol displayed. So click on OK and I will not be changing any of the other settings. And click on OK once more. So first things first, we need to proceed to the structure tab and click on the beam button over here. And if you click on this drop down, you'll see a bunch of beam sizes for the universal beams. And we are only interested in concrete rectangular beams for this video. So for this video, I'll be using a 300 by 600 millimeter beam. And I'll just quickly draw it out anywhere. I'll just be showing you how to model a reinforced concrete beam on its own. It doesn't matter where I place it. So I'll just quickly place down this beam in level 2. And the length of my beam would be 5 meters, so about 5,000 millimeters over here. Like so. And usually before I do any kind of rebar placement or modeling, I usually like to place down section views going from left to right and top to bottom. So I will go to the view tab over here and click on section. So I will make a section from left to right like so. And from top to bottom. So I can just pick somewhere here to make this section. And you can find these section views just by scrolling down. There's a sections drop down button over here and click on section one. So section 1 is the left to right section and section 2 will be the section that cuts across the reinforced concrete beam. So that's something to remember. So now let's deal with the reinforcements. So let's head back to the structure tab. But before we begin modeling the structural rebar, let us check on the rebar cover for our beam over here. And let us choose the pick elements here. So right now we are using XD1, XC3. So the cover would be 30 millimeters. Let's say that in this case, I would need a 50 millimeter rebar cover. So I can choose a XC3 50 millimeter rebar cover over here. So when we were changing the rebar cover for our reinforced concrete beam, you might have noticed all those alphabets, XC, XD, XS, and perhaps X0 even. So I will explain what each one means. So for X0, it means that the risk of corrosion or attack for the rebar is non-existent. For XC, corrosion is induced by carbonation. And for XD, corrosion is induced by chlorides and XS is corrosion induced by chlorides from seawater. So those are some key terms you should remember. So now let us move on to the rebar button over here and let's click on it. So you'll see this pop-up emerge over here. So rebar shape definitions will not include hooks or end treatments. These options can be changed under reinforcement settings and should be set before adding any rebar elements to the project. For this case, we can just click on OK. So for the rebar shapes, it will greatly depend on what library you're currently using in Revit. For this case, I'm using a UK library. 
So all my rebar shapes will be based on BS8666. So for this video, we'll be mainly focusing on BS8666. You might have different rebar shapes if you're using ACI codes, for example. So now let us place in the stirrups. So let's scroll down and find rebar shape 63. So 63 would be this one right here. So you have quite a few options here for your stirrup. So you can either place it in the current work plane, near cover reference or far cover reference. So let's say if I were to use the current work plane and place in this stirrup right here. If I were to open up the 3D view, so you can clearly see that this stirrup is placed in where section 2 is located. So we are currently in section 1 here and you can see that the stirrup is placed at where section 2 is drawn over here, as you can see. So let me just make this a uh, wireframe here, like so. So from level 2, we can clearly see that the stirrup is placed at where section 2 is. So that is the effect of placing down a stirrup when using the current work plane setting. If you're using near cover reference, so if I were to place it in, you won't be able to see it and you'd have this warning over here. None of the created elements are visible in section 2. So what it means is that the stirrup was placed at the nearest end of the beam, which is this left side over here. So that's why we cannot see it in section 2. And you might have guessed by now that if I were to use the far cover reference and place it in, it would be at the far end of the beam. So I'll quickly delete the stirrups except for the one in which near cover reference was used. So after placing down the stirrup, you might wonder if I can actually add in more stirrups or adjust the spacing of stirrups, for example. And you can do so just by selecting the stirrup. And there's a layout section over here, or should I say a layout drop down. And there's single, fixed number, maximum spacing, number with spacing, and minimum clear spacing. So right now we are using single. If we click on fixed number, we can adjust the number of stirrups we'd like to have. For example, I can key in 50 and Revit would have automatically spaced it out accordingly on its own. So if I go back to section 1 right now and if I were to go and annotate this, the current spacing set by Revit would be 100 millimeters for each of these stirrups here. So if I were to go and select this stirrup again and change it to maximum spacing, I can only set the spacing over here and Revit will determine the number of stirrups that will be present. So for example, if I set the spacing at 50 millimeters, as you can see, Revit would increase the number of stirrups based on the value I've placed in for the spacing. And for number with spacing, this is the most straightforward one to use. And this is the most recommended one, I would say, because you can key in the number of stirrups and the spacings per stirrup. But you must be very careful in the sense that uh, if you key in the wrong quantity and the wrong spacing, you'll have your Reinforced concrete beam partially reinforced over here. So in this case, we need a hundred millimeter spacing so that the stirrups would be on both sides of the beam from left to right. And the final setting here is minimum clear spacing. So if you're using minimum clear spacing over here, the spacing value that you've keyed in here will be the benchmark minimum spacing for your stirrups. So I keyed in a hundred millimeters here, but Revit spaced it out to 114 millimeters so that's one thing to note about the minimum clear spacing so for this case i'll just use a, a number of spacing 
option like so and I'll proceed back to section 2 to draw in the longitudinal bars so now that I'm in section 2 right now I will go and place in the longitudinal bars so for this video I can use either 00 or 01 rebar shape so if I were to pick 00 for this case there are some settings that I need to pay attention to so I can either use current work plane near cover reference or far cover reference for longitudinal bars uh, any option will be fine but the most important thing to remember is what type of parallel or perpendicular setting we're using if you're using parallel to work plane over here you can only place your longitudinal bar vertically like this or horizontally like this so it is not the correct orientation for our longitudinal bar so let's try parallel to cover so this is the correct orientation for our longitudinal bar and let's try perpendicular to cover over here and as we can see with perpendicular to cover we have a similar orientation for our longitudinal bar so you can use either parallel to cover or perpendicular to cover to draw in your longitudinal bars here so I'll just place four bars two at the compression flange or compression zone and two at the tension zone and if you want to change the size of your longitudinal rebar you can just select each one of these and you can click on the drop down here so right now we are using a 12 millimeter diameter bar I can change it to 25 millimeters for example so now that we've already drawn out our reinforced concrete beam we can actually go and dimension it so the depth of the reinforced concrete beam as a whole is 600 millimeters and the overall breadth or width is 300 millimeters here and now we can dimension the interior parts of the reinforced concrete beam so for example I can dimension the rebar cover so that's 50 millimeters there as we've said before and I can move this text out elsewhere and if you find that the text for your dimensioning is too big you can try let's say 1 to 25 like so and now we can dimension the rest of the stirrup so from the top part of this stirrup to the bottom part of the stirrup here it will be 500 millimeters here and from the bottom of the stirrup here to the bottom of the reinforced concrete beam it will be another 50 millimeters here so let me just quickly move this out of the way and now let's dimension from left to right so from the left face here to the rebar it's 50 millimeters and from the left of the stirrup here to the right of the stirrup would be 200 millimeters and from the right face of the stirrup to the right face of the RC beam it's another 50 so let me just tidy things up a bit and there we go so this is our reinforced concrete beam fully dimensioned and this is the reinforced concrete beam in 3d so that's it for today's Autodesk Revit tutorial on reinforced concrete beams and if you did find this tutorial useful do like this tutorial and share it with anyone who might benefit from it and consider subscribing to this channel for more Autodesk Revit tutorials and as always stay safe keep learning and god bless